It's not like orcs where they see evidence of orc raiding all the time when they leave the village. They have to actually travel a ways out into the hills to see yakmen. Okay, so they don't... Not a lot of... Uh... Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah, he doesn't seem very concerned about that. When you bring up the books in his... Uh, down in his den, he kind of chuckles a little bit and he tells you that most of what he has are just village records dating back for from people in his position as the, the town mayor. It's his job to keep detailed records of births, marriages, deaths, tasks being given to the various town folk, uh, educations on conflicts between villagers, all of this sort of thing. He tells you, you're welcome to go downstairs with a candle and a kettle and take as long of a look as you want, but you will find the reading to be droll and uninteresting. And Wendy will actually uh, nod at that and just say in response, it's possible that your ancestors buried more wisdom in there than you know. That maybe we can find something from when the deal with the white lady was first made. But he calls back to Mother Oliver, tells her to put a kettle on because it looks like his guests are going to be settling in for a long boring evening of pouring over a Sarah Fall uh, details neither of you can speak or read their language so he's going to have to go down with you and help you through this process that's fine. And he will speak at great length on the vast history of every family in the area. In fact, one of his jobs as the mayor is to approve marriages and unions in the town to make sure that basically to keep interbreeding to a mi- to a minimum. Let- so while he's while he's like going through these, mm-hmm. I'm going to kind of surreptitiously remembering what Red said. See what info they have of infant deaths okay. in the uh, town. I'll let one of you make me an insight check real quick. Alright, um, what, what's your insight, buddy? Uh, plus three. Alright, I got a six. That's a twenty-one. Okay. Starting at the most recent things and the kind of moving backwards. Uh, the Olivers had several children, but the, for one of the first things you learn is that many of the children of older families in Asera Fall don't stay in the village. And he kind of just mentions this in passing, that they had children, but none of them married inside the village. And he leaves it at that. Do you guys pick at that scab at all? Um, I'm going to keep it in mind and maybe come back to it okay. because right now it seems like he's telling us stuff and if we start peeking at things now we might not get him bored enough to start telling us stuff he should okay Wendy I want you actually you both can make me a perception check make this individually though because you're not going to have a chance to share information unless you're going to talk in front of this guy this poor man Okay. That's a 20 for me. How did Birdie do on that perception? Perception. So that is a 16. A 16? Okay. One of the first things you learn is essentially the Mokden numbering system, how they number their seasons and their years. And even though you can't read the language, you start picking up on just the symbols that are used to mark years. Kind of like you're playing friggin' Abduction. So, All right. He does not mention the deaths of infants. But looking through some of the records, you guys notice that, yes, every... He's kind of watching over his shoulder. Every winter. Every single year. Every four seasons, like clockwork. An infant dies with no no recorded uh, occurrence of their death. They just mark that one of the families lost a baby. They don't go into details about the cause of death. 
and it's just left at that. He never mentions it. You just see these deaths in yeah. the records as he's kind of unfurling them on his table. So you guys are going to be there the better part of the day, most likely. Yeah. Let's go back to Adrix and Rasu now. Adrix finishes his breakfast and Rasu finishes her bath. You get all the smeared ooks meal out of your fur. Yep. And what's next we can do? Put my armor back on and head head back inside and say, "All right, so what else is with this uh What else what else is going on in this town?" Turns to Adrix and says that. <laughs> All right. Let's uh Let's go meet the rangers, then. Fair enough. You're going to go introduce you to the going to introduce you to the whole town. That's what we're going to do. Sure. Which yeah, ranger be... are you trying to find? Oh. I will tell you yep. which ranger. That's my hope. Ranger Ricky. <laughs> the pink ranger. Apparently, I didn't write down the Ranger's names. Um, yeah, I'm seeing that. <laughs> Pink Ranger. Um, the one you spoke to on the... Uh, I, mean, I could just sit here and let you twist in the wind all day. That's fun for me. The one you spoke to out on the stage that day, who you impressed with your... Yeah, that's actually thinking. who I was thinking of. That was Tudor. Tudor Conway. Right. Right, Tudor Conway, because I made a... Okay, yeah, let's go find Tudor. Yeah, you made a good impression on him. No, because his... <laughs> his name's <laughs> fake as heck, yeah. Yeah, it's... Came from the same name generator as everybody else in this town. Like, I'm pretty sure Tudor Conway is like a country singer. Yeah. Like an old-timey country singer. It's an Aikwood name. You just, <laughs> you just head out <laughs> to town and you just follow the sound of his banjo with strumming. <laughs> no, you find him down by the river. He is, uh... Basically gutting the most recent kills, separating the meat from the pelt, so he can deliver the meat to the smokehouse and the pelts to the furrier. And he's alone. He's the only one of the three. He stands as he approaches, and he sees the hobgoblin. His first instinct is to reach over for his knife. But when he sees that, like, you're not leading her in chains, and she's not bearing any weapons, he realizes who she is and relaxes. <laughs> See? Isn't it a good thing I came along? Huh? 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 I wanted you to come along. <laughs> not not exclusive of your idea. Uh, yeah. Adrix introduces um, Tudor to Razu, and vice versa. Razu, Adrix what's bringing your up perception? that it was passive perception eels in another tab. Eleven. Are either of you trained in medicine? Yes. No. Adrix, you see on his upper arm, just beneath his shoulder, uh, he has fresh bandaging. Hmm. Um, Adrix will be the one. Uh, Ad Adrix brings up that it was because of Tudor that he was informed about guest rights. Yeah. And that's what started all of this in motion. And... Tudor says that he's glad he did. He's happy that your your friend is able to share the hospitality of a Sarah Fall. No doubt you've earned it with as many orcs as you've killed. So, uh, what happened to your arm? I noticed it's uh, got a little bandage going there, huh? Tells you it was skimmed with an arrow last night. Yesterday what happened? Evening. An arrow... You say. He says that the, uh... The orcs are closing in closer and closer to the village. Usually they don't run into them. They don't stray far enough uh, when hunting for game. But last night, a pair of orc scouts came across them. Shot a couple of arrows across their bow before they were able to hide from them. 
Gives a shifty look to Razu. Nice trying... shifty one. How many? Do you know? It says at least two, but there might have been more. They didn't hang around to find out. They're hunting him down. You know. Really spread that fast, huh? Yeah. Ah, shit. I thought... Hmm. He tells you that... uh, Glynn, the eldest of the three rangers, he wants to leave this well enough alone. Let this be a uh, problem the village solves on its own without putting their guests out anymore. But Tudor and Irianed spoke about it as she was dressing his wound this morning. He thinks you all ought to drop by her house at some point. Irianed's, yeah. Okay. You can, you can swing that. I'll get, I'll wrangle everybody together then. Let them know what's going on. Just so he knows he, he asks now that he has Rasu here in front of him how many orcs have you actually killed in your day <laughs> Rasu starts counting off her fingers huh? four and five Ad- Adrix jumps in billions she's killed billions of orcs nodding in, in encouragement and he laughs and then he resumes his work <laughs> And what's next for you two? I guess we find everyone else. <laughs> Stop being so humble. So you kill a lot of orcs. They're not going to know. Being boastful and loud is what got people killed in the prisons. Hey, Drax. Sorry. Being boastful and loud is fun. You should try it. So you're going to go try to find your companions? Yeah. I mean, Wendy and Bertie, you here have gone to the mayor's house uh, for the day. You're going to have to interrupt their research if you want to get hold of them. And while you guys are talking to the ranger, Red has gone over to the Carey family smokehouse, which is the best smelling house in town, most likely. Let's go to the smokehouse. <laughs> well, Red, you get there first because it's right next door. Desto muted. No, I'm here. Okay. But you were muted. So what are you... Are you going straight to the Carrie's house? Or do you have other things yeah. you want to do before then? Okay. No, that's fine. And the widow, Helid, opens the door. Uh, Helid is the one who's having an... Un- a non-traditional affair with... Mr. Tudor Conway, the ranger. But they refuse to marry, so the town looks down on them. But she sees who it is. She welcomes you in. She says she's sorry for the state of the place, but uh, there's been a lot to do today. She asks what she can help you with. Uh, Yeah, your neighbors actually sent me. They were... And do you mind if I come in? Yeah, she invites you in. Okay. Um, your neighbors sent me. They were a little concerned that they weren't quite getting the proper share of meat for a family of their size. And Helen kind of sighs. She tells you that they're getting exactly what the council has decided a family of their size should get. That's her immediate response. If they have issues with their portioning, they should take it up with the council at the next meeting. And how uh, exactly is the meat measured out? (laughs) 
as she runs through some of the grisly details with you, each family is allotted certain portions of both fresh and salted meat for their meals, uh, including at communal gatherings like the one that you ate at the other night. And they're getting what they should be for a married couple and two children, what they but they're not getting what they were accustomed to this time last year when they still had a living baby. And you guess that's that's the problem. They're expecting uh, the portioning to be more because they just lost their child. Hmm. Is that customary? Make a persuasion check. Well, what what sure. in, what information are you trying to get out of her with that question? Uh, do you is there like uh you know, any extra support that it gives to the village gives to people who go through this in order to help them get over it with, you know, their um, warning and whatnot. Yeah, go ahead and make a persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> uh, eight. She tells you that she understands uh, she understands what it is to lose a child. She lost a child of her own when she was much younger, when her husband was still alive. But she says that the world continues to spin, the seasons continue to change, and at some point you have to be done weeping about it. And she seems very focused when she says that. Can I make an insight check to see if I believe that they're getting the appropriate amount? She's not giving you any indication that she's lying. In fact, okay. uh, knowing because you sat at the table with her, she's the head of her household here. Um, she's a very no-nonsense kind of person. Okay. Yeah, if, if she's giving everybody what the council says they ought to get. Uh, and about this time, you hear footsteps outside as Adrix and Rasu approach. She excuses herself, walks over to the door, and lets in your two companions. Red. We've, we've got problems. Adric says to Red. What language just kind of gives you a... say that? Uh, common. Okay. Red just kind of gives you a look like and. <laughs> I think the orcs are trying to find the village. Hmm. I think word has spread much faster than any of us have anticipated. That is a problem. Um, and he, Adrix tells a story about um, Tudor Conway, real name, uh, <laughs> taking an arrow from two orcs. And at this, Helid corrects you. He says the arrow only grazed him, and if he's crying about that wound... Oh. Send him back around here, and I'll toughen him. Toughen him up. Uh, no, 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 no. He's not crying. I inquired about it since I dabble in medicine here and there. I just saw it. I commented on it, and that's the story. And it's, you know. Hmm. So um, we're gonna meet with Iria Dead sooner rather than later, and we. Th I think everyone should be there. All right. Well, I have a few minutes of business uh, at the neighbor ha at the neighbor's house here, and then uh, I can join you. Cool. Shouldn't take long. Are you going to attempt to collect Windy and Birdie? Yep. And do the two of you leave the afternoon's research prematurely? Well, so what? What is this? What are we leaving for? They're going to go speak to the rangers about the orcs. 
is my yeah. understanding. I think we've gotten, like, most of what we're going to get. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to thank the Elder for his time and say that we might come back if we think of uh, something else to look for. And he tells you... <laughs> He chuckles a little bit, and, uh, you know, he thanks you for humoring an old man, but he knows you're not going to come back and resume this dry and endless research into village happenings. And he starts organizing all of the papers and records and uh, ledgers that he's gotten off his shelves. And I'm going to nod, and I'm going to say we didn't learn anything so far. <laughs> <laughs> Birdie is like super disappointed he didn't get any arcane secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Furrier's house is over here. The Bolivar household is where Arian had lives. By the time as soon as we're, as soon as we're like kind of away and on our own, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take Red aside and let Red know that we absolutely did learn something. Red's not with you guys. Red went back to the Tanner's house for yeah. a moment. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna tell Ajax because Ajax can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I mean, that is genuinely fair. So, right, stepping back over to the leather, leather workers' family. Yeah. What is your report? Well, I spoke to your neighbor, and I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to get you any meat. Um, I don't think she was lying when she told me you were getting the appropriate amount now, and that last year you were getting more on, on account of your infant. And, again, I'm sorry about that. So I guess I'll have to uh, take my sword and find someone else to make that armor. He puts his hand on the sword as you go to take it back. And he's, he snorts, and you can tell that he didn't like the answer that he got, but it was the one he was <clears throat> expecting. He tells you that he'll he'll work the armor. He'll see what he can do. Uh, it's going to take him about a, a week to work this. All right, I might have to, it may be a few days longer. And if, again, if there's anything you need from outside of town, uh, since I wasn't able to get you that, you know, I'll be, I'll probably be about. So anything that wouldn't be more than a day or two out of the way between here, and I could probably pick up on the way. He says, he'll uh, thank you. Let you know. You guys arrive at the Bolivar family house part way through the afternoon. And by the time you do, Conway is already there with his furs slung up across the back. <laughs> and who else is home? I actually have little percentages to see who's home at what given times of day. I decided to go old school with this village. <laughs> Why don't you just check the Ajax table instead? Just use the Ajax table all the time. <laughs> Brick Road, you can't go old school because you don't have a hats table. Oh, there's, there's no hats table. It just tells you how many hats are in every closet. <laughs> tells you how many feathers are on the hats. Going into the house, there's a lot of kids in this house. Uh, Arianed's sister, Ariel, and her husband, Cadfile, have two sets of twins <laughs> that kind of have the run of the place. And Conway brings you in, and he kind of brings everybody else up to speed about what he and Adrix and Rasu just spoke about. And as he's doing so, Irianid arrives along with the widow Helid, and Helid is carrying a small parcel. When she enters with this small parcel, uh... Irina's sister goes and closes all of the windows, lights a candle on the table, sends all the sh kids outside, shoes them all. So it's just you guys, Irina, Ed, Tudor, and Irina's Ed's sister. And Irina Ed begins... Well, first of all, she asks if... Uh, the arrows that she gave you came in useful on your trip. But I nodded like I used mine to assist in taking down a... And then I paused for a moment because I don't have a word for flying wolfman. That is also a ghost. <laughs> 
So you just say I used it to take down, uh, and you just kind of trail off. Yeah. She finishes the sentence, and she says, orc? No. More like a flying wolf man who is also a ghost. And the description (laughs) just gets lost in the translation between the two of you. Right. (laughs) I'm just like, I need to come up, I need to find the word for this. This has already come up way too many times. I need to know the word. (laughs) One is way too many times. Maybe you've never met Wendy. (laughs) Helen is a middle-aged woman, and she kind of takes control of the conversation at first. She's not a ranger herself, but her little boy toy, Conway, is. And you can tell that she's good friends with Irionette here. And they tell you that they've been noticing these orcs getting bolder and bolder uh, in the past few months that they considered it tragic when the brewer and his family didn't return when they were supposed to but not necessarily surprising then Helen sets this parcel on the table and she says that she believes that she's spoken with the rangers and two of the three of them agree with her that they can trust you with some of their secrets She says they've been searching for a better way to protect the village from outside threats than just the glamour that they rely on. And to this end, the rangers have delved into some of the ruins and dungeons in the area and brought back some of these items. And she opens up this parcel on the table, and there are several vials of liquid and two wands. Bertie squeals. <laughs> Bertie Rasa snaps up the parcel and nobody ever sees him again. Rosa puts a hand on uh, Bertie's shoulder. I'm not going to take them. Helen asks what you all have been told about the glamour on the village or what you've been able to ascertain. And uh, Wendy's going to respond, not all of the truth. So what is your understanding of it? What do you tell her that you know? Ah, screw it. (laughs) (laughs) Wendy tells her that they think that the the, uh, village is powering the... uh, the glamour through a means that they're trying to keep secret. Yeah, Wendy says they might be ashamed of it. And Helen confirms that it's a it's a secret and a shame to be sure. She looks over at Red. It says, uh, you were spotted over at the you had business at the Perry household. Did they tell you? Yes, what happened? Needs- to their daughter. Mm, I didn't want to press the issue. I've learned that people can be emotional about this sort of thing. Hella tells you that the that white mother is a some sort of fairy. And many generations ago she taught their ancestors a ritual. She brought with her a bushel of perfect apples. The villagers were told to bury these apples at intervals in a large circle around the town. And that for the duration of the year, creatures with orc, goblin, or yikari blood would be unable to find the town as long as it was thus hidden. It takes a year for the apples to rot away and lose this ability. And as payment for another bushel, every year the white mother demands an infant child from the town. Every year? Every winter. Just before Abrix the first has a snow very falls. confused look on his face. Is that why people have been leaving the town? They don't want to take part in this? 
Helen says some, no doubt. She says that this past winter it was the Perry family who whose daughter was selected. But nobody's forced to stay here. She says no. In fact, there has been some concern, uh, especially the Oliver family. There's been some concern that the, the town is growing stagnant, that the population is not sustainable. And his children left to find out whether or not they could establish another Mokedon village. But they left and nobody's heard from them again. Birdie pipes up. How do they pick the, uh, how do they decide who, what child to sacrifice? At that, Helen becomes quiet, and Arianid answers for her, and says that the child is chosen through a lottery. Every winter, one of the households with children is selected uh, by secret ballot, pulled out of a hat. The Sounds child like is a shit lottery. It's left on an altar in the woods nearby, and the infants are never seen again. The white mother claims them and leaves them a bushel of air of apples, which they then bury around the town. It seems horrible, but it also seems like otherwise there would be no children. And that seems to be the general consensus amongst people in the town. But why a child? And Helen kind of laughs at for a moment. She says she advises you not to try to understand the minds of fairies. That you will drive yourself mad. I'm already there. Okay. <laughs> Conway pipes up now. He says that he believes just based on his own experience of ranging the areas out hunting critters he doesn't believe that the town is completely defenseless he believes the people in the town could be trained to use <clears throat> arrows and weapons to stand in defense of uh, especially orc raiders that an actual palisade could be constructed and he motions to the devices on the table and says if more objects like this could be discovered and put to use if we only had a way of knowing what they do. Wendy nods and says, that sounds like a better plan. Like, Birdie pipes in, it's almost like you guys need some allies as well. Like, we happen to know a group of people who don't necessarily get along with the orcs. And who have also been proven to stay in their own area and not encroach on others. They yeah. start inquiring as to who these people might be. There is a group, there's a tribe of lizard men in the nearby uh, lake, I guess. Swamp. It's swamp. And at the mention of shallow scale lake, yeah, they know where the place is. They Most of the Mokedon stay clear of the forest because it's exceptionally dark and they don't. Re they have really no need to venture into that area. And sh and Wendy says that sounds perfect because they don't seem to have any interest in leaving the swamp. So I don't see any we reason why you couldn't be good neighbors. It would also help you get things you need that you can't get. And they would be happy to get something back in return for the goods that they're already collecting. They don't get anything from the orcs. <laughs> yeah. In the exchange glances, you can see that the, like, the wisdom of what you're suggesting is sinking in a little bit. But here comes the uh, here comes the, the flip side of that. What's and the flip that's side? the flip side is that. Oh, wait, no, Razu can't point this out because she wasn't there for that conversation. Never mind. <laughs> Well, she was, but 
<laughs> None of the rangers have come across lizard men before. There's not been a lot of contact between the two tribes. I'm surprised there was any. Erian Ed and Conway share a few words between each other in their native tongue, uh, whispering back and forth. As they do, Helwood speaks up. It says, we can start here, though. What can you tell us about these items that we found in our brief excursions into the ruins? Bertie rubs his hands together and says, if you give me some time, <laughs> I can tell you what they do. They indicate Possibly. one of the wands. Uh, at first glance, it just looks like a brittle twig, like it was just pulled off of a bush somewhere. But looking more intently at it, you can see at first what you thought was... Uh, Markings or cracks in the bark, or maybe little uh, areas where like a leaf had been torn away. Any markings on it, when you look very closely, you see they're actually inscriptions. She you got a gift one. for us? <laughs> she says that this one, when they attempt to use it, uh, they found it in some ruins in a nearby wood. They attempted to use it when they found it. It was the first of these items that they had come across. And thinking that, hearing the old stories of old magic that can be used. Uh, but what ended up happening is they summoned a monster. A ferocious, man-eating tree spirit. And they fled from it immediately, rather mm. than hanging around. And they haven't used it since... And because of that interaction, they haven't done a lot to play around with any th anything else on the table. Did it seem hostile to you? She says that the, when... the rangers were lucky to escape from it with their lives. That, and and Wendy like makes a swiping motion with her wing though, and she says, "No, was it? Were you lucky or?" Were you in control of the creature in some way? I have some experience through rituals of summoning creatures from another existence. Although, with me, it's more of a uh, an air sort of uh, spirit. Helen tells you that the Mokden, by their nature, are not exceptionally bold when it comes to various forms of magic. Mm -hmm. that She wasn't on the excursion. She's not a ranger herself. But the description that she got from uh, Conway was... Yeah, it was a ferocious tree monster with blood-red eyes, exceedingly sharp teeth, and grasping branches. Fortunately, it was not able to move, so they fled from the area as soon as they used this wand. Okay. The other wand is a, a polished silver wand with pinkish coral inlays running along the length of it. They've never tried that one. They also have two oils and two potions on the table. Do we recognize any of the oils or potions? You do not. The first oil is white and opaque. The second is like a bright orange color. All right, if you want me to write that down, you're going to give me a second. <laughs> Let's not worry about it right now. The yeah, so Okay. Various colors, but no, you don't recognize any of them. Yeah. But you all are the first actual guests they've had in town that uh, have shown any kind of knowledge about these matters, which is why they're taking the risk to inquire as to what you might be able to help them with. Bertie says, I will att Bertie really wants one of the wands. Like <laughs> and he's he's trying like I'm trying to think of a way to to uh he, he Bertie says one second and he pulls red to the side and says, Can can you can 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 you get me one of the wands? I'll like do the work for them. But I would like one of the at least one of the wands. The silver one is very shiny indeed. <laughs> yes, that's that's the what he's looking at. 
it's like it's magic and shiny. It's like it's hitting all of it. It's hitting all of uh, the birdie's buttons right now. <laughs> he really wants the shiny wand. I don't want to hear about Bernie's buttons. <laughs> um, so, I mean, Red will tell them, like, we might be able to de devise what some of these do, though our methods are generally not beyond simple experimentation. It's, Bernie pipes up, it's, it's, uh, it's the scientific method. And experimentation is exactly what they've been essentially too scared to try after their first experience with this horrible tree monster. And about this time, the two rangers finished their discussion, and Arian had... If you didn't know any better, you would say she was blushing. As Conway says, there's something else. He says, during the rangings, before they found, or before they were spotted by those orcs yesterday. Uh, there's more to the story. They had come across a, an encampment of them that had been laid waste. And he begins to describe <laughs> exactly yeah. what you found when you came across those dead kobolds before. Uh, orcs hanging from trees, oh. uh, the rune drawn in the mm. ground, the dead mm. and desiccated grass in the area. So this one's not on us, is what you're that saying. That one is not on us. <laughs> what? <And laughs> he's seen this. The rangers have come across these uh, spots a couple times. Somebody out there in the wilderness really has it out for orcs. They're not just killing orcs. We ran across kobolds. S speaking of kobolds, we should probably mention to somebody... Uh, that the yak men actually had kobolds assisting them and their little glamour does not protect against kobolds. To which Conway says, meaning no offense, my small friend, but we are not, I, I believe we are perfectly equipped to handle kobolds. <laughs> just, kobolds just don't strike fear into the hearts of people the way the yak Kobold. men do. Cobalt looks him square in the eye and said, "Yes, and if I had <laughs> if I had twenty flying kobolds, I could fly above your house and set them on fire while you slept at night." Well, the twenty flying kobolds could fly above their house. Yes, well, you, you know. could not fly. <laughs> and he says, "This is all the more reason that we need better protections for the town than what the White Mother can provide. If there are other dangers out there besides orcs." It's better to be equipped to fight them rather than Agreed. rely on this glamour. Birdie's like really upset now. He's he's all sour because they they impinged his cobalt on her. <laughs> to add insult to injury, uh, Adrix picks up the silver wand and starts looking at it. Okay, and you're it's very pretty. It's shiny. Mm -hmm. It has nice coral inlays. It feels a little colder than you imagine it ought to. Don't stick hmm. it in your mouth. Oh god. <laughs> Don't give you ideas. These, they found maybe a half dozen of these orc encampments around that had been destroyed and had the same markings. Uh oh. But hmm. over the period of the past year or so, this is something that's been ongoing. Could you draw the markings? He says he can't, but Irianed can. And again, you, if you couldn't if you didn't know better, you'd think she was blushing. But she does. They get a piece of charcoal and they roll parchment out. And she does draw out the marking that you all saw on the ground. We've and then seen they this exchange. Before as well. well, they inquire as to where you've seen it. Like, it's like, like, At the uh, cobalt encampment. like Bertie had said with a cobalt encampment. Okay. And they exchange a few more lines in their Mokedon tongue. And then... Irina tells you that she knows who's killing orcs. That's good. Who? Who is it? She doesn't know his name. He doesn't speak Mokedon and didn't know any common. But... 
during one of the rangings when Glynn was ill several months ago, she and Conway went out alone to hunt and came across one of these camps. While they were in the camp, one of these dead orcs uh, turned out to not be dead, slashed at Conway with a weapon and tried to escape, looking absolutely panicked. And Conway gave chase. And as Irina was going through the camp, putting her blade through the rest of these orc corpses to make sure that they didn't stand up as well, she heard a noise. And she found the man who attacked the camp. And he had been brutally injured. One of these orcs had gotten him across the chest. And I have to read a description of this person off my sheets. If I can find it. <coughs> okay. She describes him as a lithe man coated in gray fur. She says he wears shadows the way other folk wear clothes. He wields two sickles in combat, the way that Adrix wields two blades. Swords are cooler. And at first, he tried to escape from her. He tried to flee the camp. But he was too injured to move. And eventually, he, she managed to calm him down and bind his wounds, bandage him up. And she describes... The way she's describing them, you can tell she's absolutely smitten with whoever this man is. She said he, ne thing. he never spoke, but he made a sound that was like a warmness in his heart, yearning to burst free. And at this point, Conway lets her off the hook and says... Yes, and if we manage to find Irianed's boyfriend again, <laughs> we can perhaps enlist his aid more effectively to help defend the town against orcs. Where is shadows? That's how she described it. He wears shadows the way other people wear clothes. Hmm. Was he humanoid, lizard, animal, vegetable, mineral? Uh, he was humanoid and coated in gray fur. Okay. Gray fur. Not as coarse as Rasu's. Are we talking tall, short, medium, wide, extra wide, slender? Well, he was lithe, but I, I don't remember if he said how tall he was. What size category? <laughs> uh, she says... When he at first tried to run from the camp before she was able to treat his wounds, uh, he was trying to flee on all fours the way a, a wild boar might. Did he say anything to you? They didn't speak a common language. Hmm. Did you Did you witness this individual uh was the camp was the state of the camp when she came into it was it already in the configuration where the symbol was on the ground and the, no, the orcs were fact, strung up they didn't have to they, they weren't cutting down the orcs or anything she was going around the camp putting her blade into the corpses on the ground through their necks to make sure that they were all dead it looks to her like what happened is he attacked the camp the attack went sour one of them got in a lucky hit. He managed to kill all but one of them. And eventually Conway confirms that he lost the injured orc as he gave chase. And when he made his way back to camp, Irina had already bound up this mysterious shadow man and he was asleep in the camp. When they woke up the next morning, he was gone. Did anybody ever put the symbol on the ground and all that? Or was that something that was skipped in the uh no there was no symbol but they they do remark 
that large pass, patch of desiccated grass that they've come to notice as like one of his hallmarks was in fact present. Okay. Irinid is afraid that the orcs aren't looking for the village. They're staying close to the village because that's where uh, a lot of these slayings have taken place. She thinks the orcs are hunting down the murderer. Sensible. So, finding this man would, as I see it, you kind of have two options if you're going to seek this person out. Option A, make him an ally against the orcs, bolster the defenses of a Seraphall, and see if you can't make this, strike this match between pigs and lizards to the benefit of everybody. Or B, you capture him, turn him over to the orcs, and get back in their good graces. Well, fuck the orcs. Right, guys? Yeah. Bertie does not like orcs. Like, the orcs suck. <laughs> We took out a whole camp of them, and that guy was supposedly their great master general or whatever. <laughs> Conway tells you that they haven't gone close enough to actually check, but they have seen from far off. If you were to take this river and follow it east, eventually it splits, where another tributary joins it coming down out of the uh, out of the mountains where the rivers originate. He says at that point they've seen great pillars of smoke coming up night after night. He thinks that the orcs in the area that are searching for Irianet's boyfriend, that might be where their main encampment is. They've stayed very clear away from that area. We are assuming... We're making a lot of assumptions about this guy. No. We can find out any more information about him by finding him. But until then, we're not making any decisions. But it's worth finding out the information about him by hunting him down. How much if time nothing else, he knows more about those symbols than we do. <laughs> and the dog was never heard from again. <laughs> so what was Wendy saying? You kind of got over, overdrawn. Wendy said, there. "Wendy said that uh, we're not making any decisions on what we're going to do until we find this guy. But it's at least worth finding out as much as we can by seeking him out. At the least, he knows more about the symbols than we do. How many days away? How, how far away are the orc?" is the area that the orcs are searching. They've in made these encounters with orcs uh, all around the area, in no particular direction. And that makes sense, because outside of the village, this entire area of the map is kind of orc territory. Uh, specifically, the camp that they're talking about that they think is their base of operations would be somewhat more to the south than the journey you all took out to the spring and back. And it would probably be about a day each way. So you're if we went... The, you're in the afternoon of day five right now, of ten. And we need at least two days to get back to the... Back to Shallow Scale Lake. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't attempt to fix the protections here in the village and if we don't attempt to make a better deal than the one that the lizard men have with the orcs what are we even doing as a group because in my mind this is what we're out here to accomplish like i'm not saying that we shouldn't i'm just saying we need to keep in mind we are under a time crunch sorry i turned my head off, said off there for a second are we still in front of the rangers yes yeah. Yeah. yep okay I'm, I'm not going to say anything as long as we are okay Although you do have your... Oh, no, you didn't get a long rest. Are you taking a short rest, though? You do have your message. Yeah, I have a message, but... <laughs> Just one. Just that one message. Yeah, what they've ascertained is that this main uh, orc encampment that these rangers, where they think they are, is where the 
a Sarah Falls stream meets another stream coming out of the mountains uh, about a day away from you, a little bit uh, s- south of where you journeyed to go to Whitewater Spring. So what's next? Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna learn anything outstanding here. So I say we get going, and uh, we can talk on the way. If we change our mind, we can do something else. Yeah, Bertie wants to go find the guy because he know he, if he to see if he knows what the giant symbol uh, is. Oh, the one on the spellstone you were given? No, the we I know what that is. That's dominant dominate person. No, I'm talking about the one that on the the ground. Oh, okay. Well, let's let's be clear that this man has been slaying people. Some from as far as I can tell, indiscriminately from at least from what little information we've gotten from him. And Conway corrects you and says he's been slaying orcs and kobolds. One group of invading kobolds. He also has a clear theme of letting one guy get away. As far as I would point out, uh, both groups that were slain were hostile to the residents of the area. I mean, they were part, some of the residents, but they were, you know, from the mountain to the north, from the dragon, the kobolds, and then the raiding orcs. And if we're going to judge everyone who's out there killing kobolds and orcs, I mean, and then Wendy looks around at the group. <laughs> you guys have killed your share of orcs, that's for sure. What do you want yeah. to do as far as trying to identify their magic items? Oh, I think we should take them with us. Yeah. Oh, you're asking like, to take all the items with you. So that we can use them for uh, some use testing. We find some orcs. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Come on, nat 20. I shouldn't let me see things. Ah, 17. They're willing to let you take the wand that they've used before. Yeah. As a, on kind of a loaning basis. But the rest of these items are too precious for them to just hand over to you. For all they know, if for some reason their apple border comes down and orcs come through tonight, for all they know, panicky use of these items could save them. Then I ask if instead we can take the other wand, because with this one, they at least have a general idea of what it does. They have no idea what the other wand does. It could blow up in their hand. (laughs) They're willing to loan you the polished silver wand, and they're also willing to make any trades. If you have things that you know what they do and can tell them and you think they could be useful, they'll trade it across for other stuff on this table. Mm. But yeah, it will make a loan of the silver wand to you. Who's taking that wand, by the way? Um, and with trading. them talking about trading, I'll just that that's what I'll cast message to both Birdie and uh, Windy and point out that the uh, fire arrow wand is probably more useful for a group of defenders of a fortified area than it is for us. Sure, and we can at least. So do you? Uh, yeah, let's. I think it would be. I think it would be more useful to uh, uh, g- give the wand to uh, our fire arrow wand if we want to give it to anybody who's defending to the people that are expecting to be uh, attacked in the next ten day in the next few days. You know, shall we go? Yeah, but we're not talking to them in the next few days. We can make a trade for this for now. If we find out what this wand does, we can give it back to them and take our wand back. Okay, so you want to trade over the flame arrow wand for? We'll take both wands, we'll give them the flame arrow wand just in case they get attacked. Okay. And if we figure out what theirs do, do we can swap it back for the flame arrow one. Is that agreeable to everybody? Yes. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that way we have more info. Wand B is the brittle twig wand. This is the one that has the weird inscriptions on it. This is the one they say that they've used, and it summoned a horrible tree demon. Uh huh. Wand C is a polished silver wand with coral inlays and the metal feels like it has a light oh, frost on it. it. Mm. Is Adrix taking both of these? Uh, Adrix is taking the silver coral one. Okay. Not 
having no intuition whatsoever that Bert wants the loan. Bertie walks over and kicks Adrix in the shin and holds ah! his hand down. <laughs> He's like holding his hand out and making a gimme motion. Cool, man! Not cool! What was that for? Says, and then Bertie says, Don't put the wand in your mouth. Give it here. <laughs> Adrix was totally about to put the wand in his mouth. I'm just saying, if I had a magic wand that always felt cold, I would totally chill some drinks with it. <laughs> I so, wanted to compare it to how cold my breath was. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, are we turning the wands over to Birdie? Or are you going to keep holding it? I guess so. Okay. Birdie's the only one with good arcana, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No reason not to. And it requires a short rest to try yeah. to identify one of those. So that's the next question is, when are you guys going to be leaving here on your journey? Do you want to take your take a full long rest here before you head out? Or are you heading out immediately? Or what's the happens? It's two days to get back. We're currently on day five. It's going to take a day to where we need to get to and a day to get back. Yep. The other thing is, though, since we never actually finished that long rest from yesterday, we could just take one now. We don't need to wait till night. If you take a long rest right now, you'll be leaving this evening. Yeah, exactly. I don't... Oh, shit. I hate leaving in the evening. Can I... I'm going to restock on torches if we do. <laughs> That's fine. There's no shortage of wood or oil in town. You're able to go ahead and make some torches. All right, so go ahead and... Uh, you can go ahead and take your long rest if you're going to take it at stack pools. And what is everybody doing during that rest? Working on my truth serum poison. <laughs> Birdie is going to try and identify as many as the of the items that the rangers have. Like, I don't know how many I can identify in a long rest. Right now you've only got the two ones. Well, I mean, if they're if we're staying in the village, I'm. Uh, are they not going to let me try to identify their potions as well their oils we don't did, we didn't grab the oils did we no, no. but that, i was asking them if they want me to take a look at them while i'm here i mean the wands first wands first oils, but like if i have really there's not really a good way to identify them you, you either apply them to a weapon or you don't potions though okay. you could try with by testing them which one are you going to attempt to identify first the silver wand. Okay, go ahead and make that. Well, how many charges are you going to expend? One. Just one charge? Yes. So... Go ahead and make your intelligence arcana check. DC is 13. No. Okay, I'm going to use two blips. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> How'd you do? I got a two again. A two? <sighs> <laughs> so that's uh that's like no it's not thirteen it's uh, seven total. A seven yeah. So no idea what the silver wand does. Burn it again. Burn it again. Other charge. <laughs> and you're asked very politely to not experiment with the other wand inside the village because they already <laughs> know what it does. It summons a horrible tree monster. Uh, okay. Well, I'll take the uh, other wand outside of the village. And expend a charge to see if I can't figure out what it it does exactly. I'm gonna be spending my long rest like kind of hanging around Birdie, keeping an eye on him, but more. I'm gonna accurately. say you can leave the village and do this if you want, but you're not gonna be taking the benefits of the long rest if you do, because you're leaving the safety and comfort of the village. Oh, well, I need my long rest. Sorry, Birdie. This would yeah. be said as Razu. This would be something you'd have to do on the journey there or back. The potions, though, one is okay. gray and sludge-like, the other is light blue, and it coats the vial it's in, in frost. Duh. I asked them for permission to test their potions, then... Which one are you looking to test? Uh, the first one. We'll just start at the top and work our way down. Okay, how many little sips do you want to take out of this gray and sludge-like potion? Just one. Just one? Yeah. What are the letters of these potions? Sorry. Uh, they're potions D and E. 
but they're not actually in your inventory yet. Uh, make that Arcana check. Actually. Yeah, but if we're identifying them. Make a wisdom saving throw. Alright, don't. Okay, uh. Crunching on my Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I made. A nine. A nine. You are compelled yes. to drink the entire potion. You guzzle it down, and you go blind. Like, pushing a blindness. Not exactly. The bad news is the potion was cursed. The good news is it still has an effect that might help you. It is a potion... Here, I'm going to say it's got zero charges left because you drank the whole thing, which did not... <laughs> Uh, endear you to the Mokden, you said you were just taking one sip. Uh, essentially, you've drank a potion of color, sp uh, color spray. You are ah. totally blind. You can't <laughs> see. The rest of you, when you watch, he, he guzzles down this gray sludge-like drink, and he opens his eyes. He starts feeling around. You see his eyes take on this shimmering sheen of colorful radiance. You're blind until you unleash the color spray spell, as per the effects in the book. Potion of color. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> well, and I what was the color of this potion? Gray and sludge like. So, Thanks. Gertie, you are blind <laughs> until you unleash this spell. Don't need to be able to see to drink another potion. <laughs> well, when he chugs down the first one, they think better of letting him sample the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Being blind okay. does not inhibit your long rest in any way. Mm. <laughs> I'm blind every time I go to bed. <laughs> do, do I know that... Uh... Yes, you'll know exactly what happens when you unleash the spell, and you know that you're going to be blind until you do so. Okay, alright. Alright, so why don't we take our break there. As you guys are going to head off. Are you heading off at an evening or are you waiting until morning? I'll probably wait till morning. Uh, Why? Evening? Yeah. I already I'm rested. I mean, the I'm guy who. Up. So we're good. The guy who can see in the dark is blind now, so that's fun. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and put Elizabeth on screen there. We'll take a 15 minute break. Let's reconvene <laughs> about 4.45 or 3.45 if you forgot to set your clock forward. <laughs> 